Welcome back to the channel. This is Robert at Retro Car Guy 530. Today I'm going to tackle the technical service bulletin work for a brake pad squealing issue on a 2017 Chevrolet SS sedan, also known as the Holden Commodore VF2 down in Australia. To give a little background on this, the 2014 Chevrolet SS sedan came with front Brembo calipers and non Brembo in the rear, and it was the least likely one to produce noise out of all the model years. Beginning with 2015, they added Brembo calipers to the rear, and those seem to be the most likely candidates for producing the squealing noise that were involved in the service bulletin. But the service bulletin involves applying some copper paste to the front brake pad uh, backing plates and also to the rear, including a replacement of the backing insulator shim that's on the rear brake pad. So we'll get that tackled today. I'm going to try some new jack stands, which I had mentioned earlier in my vlog and let you know about those and after the intro screen I'll go ahead and show you the tools I believe will be involved in today's repair and then we'll see if there's any that I missed so I'll add some text over that screen afterwards if I missed anything but uh, thanks for coming back to the channel and let's get to work. Please review the automotive information, repair, and modification guidelines on this screen. Seek the advice of a repair professional if you're unsure how to perform any repair or modification safely and correctly. All repairs and modifications are performed at your own risk. So here are the items I believe to be involved in today's repair for the service bulletin work. Going from left to right, I have my wheel chocks to make sure I don't roll anywhere. I have my torque wrench for putting the wheels back on. I have my 21 millimeter six point socket for removing the lug nuts. I have my key for my lug nuts, which are all keyed on my vehicle. And I have my safety glasses so I don't get anything in the eyes. I have my 50 state compliant brake cleaner. My One of my new jack stands that I'll be trying out today. Gloves necessary to make sure I keep my fingers and everything away from all the lovely brake clean. And down here, I have items involved in the actual TSB work. I need to remove the pins that are holding the brake pads in, so I have some punches to help get those pins out, and a little hammer for that. I have a um, brush to help clean out the caliper slots where the brake pads go, because that's part of the service bulletin. And then I've got my copper paste that I'll be using. I, it says it takes two, and I, I believe that's correct, because when I applied this to my previous SS sedan, I only took two, but I have six on hand just in case. And my applicator of choice is a toothpick. Seems to be resilient enough to apply it and not too much of an issue where I can toss it away afterwards after cleaning it. I have the GM part for this particular service bulletin revision that involves the revised shims to go on the back pads. So I'll be using that. And then, of course, I have the actual service bulletin itself. For this particular work so that's what i believe to be involved here if something's missed i will add some t overlay text here mentioning what i didn't include here but from my previous attempt at this on my other vehicle it, this should pretty much cover it so let's get to work now i'm on the driver's side front i'm going to take some photos of the existing parts before I remove them just to make sure I have a reference copy to verify the way it was assembled before in case I have any questions afterwards. It's better to take them and not need them than to need them and not have them. So I'm going to punch out the pins using my pu small punch and it only goes so far so I have to use my eighth inch drill bit. I um, used one that I don't really care if it's whether it's sharp or not. And I will then begin to pull the pins from the back side, but it needs a little bit more pounding of the pin out to the back. And I'm pushing on the spring clip to help release the tension on the top pin and then on the bottom. So now I'm removing the pads and I'm pushing on the pistons to push them in just a little bit to release them. And notice that there's virtually nothing on those pads. One edge has a very slight hint of copper paste. So let's go ahead and clean the caliper channels which is required for the technical service bulletin. Clean them a little bit more thoroughly with brake clean. And again there was virtually no copper paste 
on the ends of the brake pads, so it's mainly clearing out the brake dust from the channels so it doesn't contaminate the copper paste. Using a microfiber towel to make sure I get everything cleared out. And now with the pads themselves, I'm cleaning the edges of the pads just to make sure there's no brake dust there. And notice I've switched my gloves here. I have a different set of gloves per wheel. And I'm cleaning that little bit of copper paste off the edge of each of those two pads. And I'm going to use my tube of copper paste with my applicator being my toothpick. And I will then apply it liberally to both ends of the pad backing plate. Again, not to contaminate the brake surf braking surface itself. Using the toothpick to roll the copper paste to the end. So I've got both ends of that particular pad coated in the copper paste. And we'll roll that uh, tube again to get more copper paste out and we'll work on the other pad. The fronts only require it on the ends of the backing plate, not on the back surface itself. Making sure it's on the edge only. And we're ready to insert that one and the brake braking surface itself is still nice and dry and clear of any copper paste, cleaning the spring. And I'm going to insert the bottom clip, bottom pin with the spring clip around that. And I'm going to use my small hammer to help tap that in. And then push in on the top of that spring clip to get the top pin in once I get done with this one here. And then I use my punch to uh, help motivate that pin into its fully installed position. And I've got the top pin in now using the hammer to get it in initially, using my metal punch to get the top one in place. The front caliper pins do not protrude beyond outside of the actual caliper. The rear ones actually stick a little bit out. So to make sure I've got it fully in, I want to make sure that the pin is fully seated on the back side. And I make sure by tapping that a couple more times. Now I've repositioned the uh, rotor into its original position so I can install the wheel in the same position I took it off from. And with that, the front is done. Now here is the rear driver's side. I've removed the pads, same procedure as the front, and you'll see that one edge is pretty much dry. There's a hint of copper paste here. And then the backing plate that's on the shim cover has already got some copper paste there, so I'm gonna to try to keep as much as that as I can, but that uh, shim cover is getting replaced for the TSP. Now I'm going to clean the caliper channels as I did on the front, using the brush and brake clean. This is to remove, again, the brake dust that's in there and any copper paste that might be in those channels. But as you remember, there's virtually none on the end of the brake pad backing plate, so it's mainly to remove the dust. So I've removed the original shim cover on the pad. I cleaned the edges of the copper paste that was on there to make sure there wasn't any dirt so leaving the only the copper paste that was there to begin with underneath it. So I'm cleaning and moving around the copper paste that was there to spread it out evenly. And I'm taking one of the new TSB specified backing plates and I'm getting some copper paste to apply to that. So that 
basically between the new backing plate gem and the backing plate itself you'll have the copper paste layer getting some more copper paste out here and applying it so that it's throughout the surface like the picture will show and now we'll apply that to the back of the brake pad backing plate and we'll get some copper paste now to apply to the ends of the backing plate this part is identical to the front brake pad uh, installation of copper paste And now that we've got the copper paste applied to this pad, that's backing plate, let's get it inserted into the caliper. And let's work on the other pad, remove the old backing plate shim, clean the edges so that I don't contaminate the, the copper paste that was there. Spread that around. Get a new backing plate shim, insulator shim. Need some more copper paste and we're going to apply that to the backing plate shim, the new one. Getting it spread around, getting close to the end of this tube of copper paste. And you can see that I've got it uh, spread around quickly in view put it on the back of the backing plate now I'm going to get the copper paste on the edges of the backing plate like I did on the other one making sure to apply it liberally per the service bulletin paste applied to the other brake pad and it's ready to go into the caliper brake pad surface is clean now we're cleaning the pins and the spring clip to reinstall them and let's get the lower pin started put the spring clip underneath the pin and Put the top pin in, pushing the spring in to get it down low enough to get the pin through. And now let's use the hammer and the uh, metal pieces that I was using to pound them back in. And again, that needs to seat fully into the back of the caliper. And on the rear calipers, the pins will push through out further than they did on the front calipers. a little uh, tapping to get it right. I was having, it was slipping off the bottom a little bit more on this particular one, so that's why it's a bit more movement there for that. And with that, front and rear are done. Repeat on the other side. The TSB work is done. I've got everything back together. And in the end of it, I found that I needed three tubes. I may have been able to squeeze it out of two, but with the new backing plates for the rear, the shims for the rear brake pads, I needed to apply a liberal amount to those new shims. So I could have done it in two maybe, but I, I ended up taking three. So I'm gonna go take a test drive, but I believe everything's complete. Checked for all tools. I've rechecked the lug nut torque at 140 uh, foot pounds. Everything's good. So uh, that's the end of this particular video. I hope this has been helpful to you. At least now you understand the scope of that technical service bulletin and we'll see how long it lasts. I have about 3,200 miles on the car today and we'll see if they, the noise reoccurs and if so, when it does, how long as far as time and, and mileage. So thanks for coming to the channel and please check out the other videos and thanks for spending your time with me today. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time and you want to, please subscribe. 
Click that bell icon to get notified when I upload new videos. Please follow Retro Car Guy 530 on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks for taking the time to visit the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.